Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 9. The Germans versus a Sea Monster In 1918, British patrol ships in the Irish Sea sank a pair of German submarines. Recently, one of them was found off the coast of Scotland. The submarine was identified by marine engineers while working to lay an undersea power cable. For the last 100 years, this thing has been sitting 340 feet deep. Yet it's in surprisingly good shape, according to marine archaeologist Ennis McCartney. McCartney says even when all other shipwrecks from previous world wars crumble to nothing, German submarines will remain more intact. Because they were meant to withstand such an extreme environment, they typically survive much longer than other wrecks. But what we're here to talk about are monsters. There has been a story circulating for the past century that the crew of German submarine UB-85 was attacked by a sea monster. The vessel was besieged while underwater, assaulted by some freakish beast tentacles. It was so effectively damaged that the submarine was forced to surface. That was when the HMS Coryopsis spotted and destroyed the German U-boat. This is the same sub that researchers believe was just found at the bottom of the sea. At least they think it was a UB-85. It may have also been UB-82, which was destroyed about two weeks earlier by a pair of patrol boats. Ennis McCartney says there is no evidence that such an attack took place. He's hoping that if the wreckage does turn out to be UB-85, it can be investigated for evidence of a sea monster attack. If the sub really was damaged by a creature, there must be proof on its hull. Sadly, it's still going to take some time before the sub is brought to the surface. Number 8. The Nephilim In Afghanistan, American Special Forces soldiers took down a giant from the Old Testament. According to the story, which has been circulating since the mid-2010s, the event went down in Kandahar in 2002. It started with the discovery of an enormous giant living in an isolated cave system. The giant was about 12 feet tall, towering over the puny mortal humans. The giant initially killed the people who found it, forcing the military to send in a group of special operators to fix the situation. The soldiers with special forces arrived at the giant's lair and found themselves fighting a beast from the Bible. It wielded an enormous sword estimated to weigh 1,100 pounds. The giant cut down several military contractors before it finally succumbed to their bullets. With the fiery, red-haired giant dead, it was covertly packaged. Then its bundled body was sent away on a transport aircraft. Since then, nobody has any idea what happened to the creature's body. At least, nobody who's willing to come forward with the truth. You might be wondering what the giant has to do with the Bible. Believers in the story think the giant may have been a Nephilim. In the book of Genesis, the Nephilim are described as the offspring of angels and humans during the days before Noah and the Flood. The Flood was sent by God to get rid of these awful monsters, but many people don't think they were all destroyed. A few pockets of them remained, which could explain why there are so many ancient stories of tribes of giants. The giant of Kandahar may have been one of the last remaining Nephilim. The government has denied any such event took place. The spokesperson for the Department of Defense said there is no record of any such incident in Kandahar. The official word is that the U.S. military has never destroyed a biblical monster. And now for number 7. But first, it's shoutout time! I want to give a huge thank you to Georgie Toogood and Carrie Oren for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this. Number 7. The Man-Eating Tiger During the Vietnam War, American soldiers had to contend not just with the Viet Cong, but also with man-eating tigers. There was heat, disease, mosquitoes, and a whole lot of trauma to deal with. But the tigers were also a constant threat in the jungle. On December 22, 1968, one of these ferocious felines stalked a team of Americans. It was a patrol with the 3rd Marine Recon Battalion near Quang Tri. There were six men in total, sent to observe activity about six miles from the border of Laos. The team completed their mission easily enough, then went back to wait for a helicopter ride out. The helicopter was stalled by poor weather. The men had no choice but to sit around and wait in the open bush. Two men watched while the rest slept. When the tiger attacked, it didn't make a single sound. Suddenly, someone was screaming. 
PFC Roy Regan woke to find the guy next to him inside the jaws of a tiger. The tiger tried to flee with its prey still clamped between its teeth, but it got stuck in a bomb crater. The Marines opened fire on the big cat, killing the creature. The Marine in its mouth narrowly escaped with his life. He suffered lacerations to his neck, but otherwise made a full recovery. According to the story, the tiger was enormous. It measured a whopping nine feet from the tip of its orange and black tail to its whiskers. It was believed to be the same tiger that killed someone else a month earlier. Number 6. Camp Pendleton Sasquatch in 1968, at Camp Pendleton in California, a group of trainees saw Bigfoot. The soldiers in training were participating in an infantry exercise. They dug into a large hill in preparation for a fake nighttime enemy attack. It was as they hunkered waiting for the enemy to attack that something not altogether human showed up. The Marines suddenly heard something big moving up the side of the mountain. They could hear the rocks rolling down the mountainside from where the creature was walking. One of the Marines yelled out, and then there it was. It was a creature about six feet tall and darkly outlined by the night. It had long arms and a weirdly pointy head. The Marines could see it perfectly from their position. The soldiers and the Sasquatch looked at each other for a few seconds. Then it took off, and they never saw it again. Number 5. The Whale Wars The 1950s was not a good time to be a whale. Iceland was having trouble with their herring fisheries. Killer whales were eating all their fish, bleeding profits by simply existing. So the Icelandic government reached out to the U.S. Navy. Iceland wanted the United States to go to war against the whales. In response, the U.S. dispatched an anti-submarine air squadron to attack the orcas. They used rockets, depth charges, and 50 caliber rounds. It was absolute bloodshed, totally devastating for the orca population. The U.S. was not the only government asked to fight a war against whales that decade. Salmon fishermen in British Columbia, Canada were also having trouble with orca whales. The whales were eating their salmon, which meant they couldn't make as much money from their catches. They lobbied the government to mount heavy artillery onto the cliffs overlooking inland straits where orcas were known to frequent. The fishermen wanted manned artillery to blast the orcas out of the water so that they could make their money. The government did not agree, but that didn't stop residents from doing it themselves. Through much of the 1950s, fishermen opened fire on orcas from their boats and posts on the shoreline. It's almost a miracle there are any orcas left at all. Number 4. The Tengu of Japan In Japanese myth, the Tengu is a flying humanoid known for causing storms. These mythical creatures were also notorious for kidnapping people. They would take their victim high in the sky and drop them, just for fun. Many of the ancient stories of people encountering a Tengu sound suspiciously like alien abductions. Around the end of World War II, soldiers were stationed at Camp Okubo near Kyoto, Japan. Private Sinclair Taylor was the man on duty the night a Tengu visited the camp. The moon was full and bright, so bright that Private Taylor could easily see his surroundings. He lit a cigarette, blew out smoke, and suddenly heard a loud flapping of wings. He looked up at the moon and saw an enormous creature with unbelievably large wings. It looked like an oversized bat, like a bat the size of a fully grown man. Acting without thinking, Private Taylor put a round in the chamber and pointed his gun at the creature. He had his finger on the trigger but hesitated when the absurdity of the situation came to him. There was a seven-foot-tall man-like monstrosity with wings hovering in the pale moonlight. It didn't make any sense. The private didn't know what to do. But then his finger found the trigger and he started blasting at it. By the time Private Taylor completely emptied his carbine, the creature was gone. It vanished into thin air as if it had never happened. Rather than getting in trouble for opening fire at what most people would have assumed was a bird, his sergeant said he understood the situation. Apparently, it wasn't the first time that creature had been seen by a soldier on duty late at night. Number 3. Indonesian Mermaids In 1943, Japanese soldiers stationed in Indonesia witnessed mermaids. Mermaids, merfolk, merpeople, whatever you want to call them. Apparently, they are very real. But they are not like what you see in the Disney movies. The sightings were reported by Japanese soldiers on the Kei Islands, located in the southeastern part of Indonesia. 
They cover an area of around 555 square miles, with most of that land untouched and unspoiled. It is the very definition of a tropical paradise, with pristine white beaches and hideous fish freaks. A small team was stationed here to do surveillance. There weren't very many people around, so the Japanese had the run of the place. They started to notice unusual creatures in the water at certain times of the day. These things had pink skin and protruding spines on their heads. When the soldiers got close enough to really look, they were shocked to see the creatures had human features. Their faces were human-ish, but they had fish mouths. They also didn't have fish tails like you might expect, but ordinary arms and legs. They just had unusual skin and other fishy qualities. The soldiers were never able to hang out with the creatures. Whenever they got too close, the fish monsters would disappear into the water and swim away. When asked, locals said they were called Orang Ikan. In the Malay language, Orang translates to human and Ikan translates to fish. Villagers admitted they would sometimes catch the human fish in their nets, but mostly they left each other alone. The sergeant of the surveillance team was Taro Hariba. He was a respected member of the Japanese military and not the kind of person expected to make things up. Yet he himself reported that he came across the dead body of an orang ikan. He had seen them a few times, then he found the body as irrefutable proof. It had tiny teeth like needles, with its fingers and toes webbed. After the war, Hariba urged scientists to investigate the area, but nobody took him seriously. It's been nearly a century, and people still haven't taken this story seriously. Do you think scientists should look into it? Let me know in the comments! Number 2. The USS Dine In 1978, an unknown creature attacked a Navy frigate. The USS Stein was at sea when their radar system suddenly became unserviceable. The ship turned back to land since they weren't able to operate properly without the radar. At the dry dock, engineers examined the ship looking for the cause of the radar malfunction. When the engineers inspected the sonar dome at the front of the ship, they found a major damage. There were tears covering the surface of the protective rubber coating. It looked like something with huge claws had torn it to shreds. Some of the tears were four feet long, and there were teeth marks. Those who saw the damage said it looked as though a swarm of alligators had attacked the sonar dome. The mysterious creature became known as the Stein Monster. A biologist for the Navy, F.G. Wood, was brought in to inspect the coating and identify the creature. He concluded it was most likely a giant squid. However, other scientists were not so sure. Judging by the bite marks and the claw marks, the giant squid responsible would have needed to be 150 feet long. No such thing has ever been found by scientists. The biologists did admit that whatever attacked the Navy frigate could have very well been an unidentified ocean monstrosity. Number 1. Bugs of War Soldiers have had to face off against some pretty terrifying enemies throughout history. The Russians weaponized dolphins, Hannibal used elephants to terrorize his enemies, and even the Spanish unleashed their terrible dogs of war on the Aztec people during their conquest of Mexico. But the one thing you don't hear much about is how bugs have consistently been weaponized throughout human conflict. There were catapults that shoot beehives, scorpion bombs, prisons filled with bugs. Military strategists have been using these things for thousands of years. More recently, Japan used fleas genetically modified to carry the plague virus to destroy Chinese cities. By unleashing infected fleas, it's estimated about 440,000 people were killed by Japan's biological warfare units. The Japanese military even had a plan to do the same thing to the US. They wanted to drop plague fleas on San Diego in 1945, but never had the chance. In the 2nd century AD, Roman Emperor Septimius Severus was attacked by a scorpion bomb. He and his Roman legions were laying siege to the desert stronghold of Hatra on the Silk Road. King Barsamia and his citizens were hiding behind the large stone walls. The king and his defenders came up with the idea to stuff scorpions into earthenware containers, then throw them at the attacking Romans. It sounds silly, but it worked. So many Romans were being stung by scorpions that they were crawling over each other in pain and agony. Even if the bomb didn't work, the Roman camp was filled with deadly creatures. After 20 days of this, 
the emperor retreated. During the Vietnam War, the Viet Cong did something similar. They would booby trap their underground tunnels with scorpions stuck in a roof cavity. The trap would go off and deadly scorpions would fall on the heads of American soldiers, potentially stinging them to death. Thanks for watching. Do you think there have been times the military killed a mythical monster and covered it up? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon for more awesome videos. See you later. Bye.